very new fun idea of walking you through how we edit personal statements. Um, we're going to kind of jump into a little bit about us and um, who Moon Prep is as a company. And then we will ask for some assistance if anybody has an essay that they are working on right now, they want a second opinion over. Now's the time to kind of send, send them in and we can edit them live. But if we want to kind of sw switch the slide, we can talk about who we are as a company and jump right in. So Moon Prep is a company made up of individual college counselors who are all focused on working one-on-one -on -one with our students to provide the most in-depth, personalized college counseling advice that is available out there. <laughs> I say this because I know from experience, I've been on a call at midnight helping a student um, do some apartment hunting when his dorm got shut down for emergency re repairs or remodels. And so we truthfully are a kind of full service advice station, essentially, when you work with us. And Moon Prep is here with a variety of counselors from solid admissions and guidance counseling backgrounds to guide you through every step of the way through the admissions process. We have a specialty um, specialized in BSMD or direct admission programs for medical, pro medical schools, but we also work with students from every major. So we have a lot of advice to give. My own personal self, um, I come from an admissions background and also uh, a strong writing background with a degree in journalism and also being a staff writer for a national magazine before coming to Moon Prep. And I know Nicole also has amazing experience too that she'll be sharing with all of us on these essay edits. Hi everyone, as Michaela mentioned, my name is Nicole. Um, I am a school, high school guidance counselor. Um, I also have experience working at a university in financial aid and admissions. So both kind of both sides of the spectrum. Um, here at Moon Prep, we really specialize in the direct medical programs or BSMD programs, as well as Ivy League. Um, my favorite part of the admissions process with helping my students is working on their personal statements. So. We're really excited to start this one. Um, I know a few more people have joined since we first started, which is awesome. So we have an essay that we're prepared to use as an example to show everyone how we edit. But if anyone has one that they would like to have us edit live, um, I'm going to put my email in the chat. So that way everyone has um, an opportunity to send that in. Um, this is a brand new webinar. We haven't ever done this one before. Yeah. So we we really wanted to get some feedback from our viewers. Um, mm -hmm. So if everyone can send that in, that would be awesome. And we can kind of go from there. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about our process. And then if we get them shared, then we'll kind of go right ahead and jump into it. And this was essentially just we wanted to see how much we could help students. You know, I, we know that you're in the trenches right now. You're writing dozens of essays for the colleges on your list. We know that we're doing that with our students. And so we wanted to op open this up as a fun educational opportunity just to see how, you know, we are how we edit essays. And of course, everybody does things differently, but it's nice to always get a second opinion on your essay. So if you're working on even a supplemental essay or your personal statement and want kind of a second opinion, we are here. So send them in to the email in the chat and we will, we can edit them live. And we do have a special that we put together just for you on this call. Um, we have a brainstorming, Pers the pr brainstorming the personal statement package. So we're going to spend time with you offline. If you kind of like what we're doing here today and you for sure want kind of more advice on your personal statement or you're watching this in a recording and you didn't get to send in your essay live, this is exactly what this is there for. Although this expires on August 15th, 
we want to help you write your personal statement. We know that's such an important piece of the college admissions puzzle because truthfully, every single school will be seeing that one. I guess, unless you're applying to some state schools that don't require an essay. Other than that, every school will be seeing this essay. So we want to spend time helping you craft that personal statement. And we're going to do that through helping you brainstorm um, ideas for your essay, as well as helping you create an extended outline together on the call that you can turn into a, your first rough draft. And then we'll spend time offline doing a story shaping edit to make sure the story is on the page and the story is complete. And then we'll do kind of more of a line editing um editing session where we're kind of helping shape the wording a little bit and then we'll kind of meet again over zoom to do a polishing finishing touch edit and so multiple meetings multiple rounds of editing all for only 199 so that's something definitely to jump in on before the deadline of august 15th and we'll mention this again at the end in case people join late or if throughout the rest of this recording, you are like, wait, what was that again? You don't have to re rewind or anything and find it later. We'll mention this again. And the really cool thing about just getting someone else's opinion is the personal statement is, it can be very subjective. So you might think that you have a really great idea and it might make a lot of sense to you and maybe those around you because they know you. Um, so kind of having some outsider perspective onto what you wanna write about can really, really be helpful. Um, we did get one submission. Oh. Um, so that was super exciting. Thank you for that. We are definitely going to use it in just a few minutes. Um, so the personal statement, a lot of students from my experience get a little confused with the jargon. Is this your college essay? Is it the personal statement? You know, what exactly are we talking about? Is it your common app essay? What's going on? So your personal statement is one essay and it goes to dozens of applications. Well, it can go up to 20 applications. Um, it's what you're sending through the Common App and there are multiple prompts that you can choose from. There is a 650 word count and it's gonna get sent to all of the schools that you apply to using that application. Now, depending on where you're applying, many of your schools will also have supplemental questions and supplemental essays that they want you to write. They're usually a little bit shorter than the 650 word count. So this will typically, and not in all cases, but typically be your longest um, statement that you will be writing. Um, and your essay is your only chance to show your true personality. So does it show, does it say everything that it should about you? The schools have your transcripts, they have your grades, all of the other things that you submit, your activities, what else would you like them to know about you um, that's important? So that is kind of one of the most important pieces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if I could jump in here. Um, you know, beyond on the application, since again, I've sat in as admissions counselor receiving these applications and i can tell you it is so hard to tell students apart you know resumes especially from people coming from different the same kind of high schools can, can kind of look similar and so beyond just the application which can be a resume of your extracurriculars which could include debate and marching band and maybe a club or two you know again, they start to sound kind of similar. So your essay is your chance to really show who the person that the school is admitting. Um, they want to know who you are and they want to admit the person who's going to do the next great things in life. They want to be on the resume of the next Steve Jobs. So your essay is that your chance to show them how cool you are. And honestly, it's what kind of sinks your admission. Um, it's not, you know, I say your grades and your SAT scores, ACT scores, they get your foot in the door, but then, you know, actually have, meeting you through your essay, that's what actually gets you all, all the way, all the way into the room. So the admissions room. <laughs> so this is just what this essay is supposed to do. We want to showcase your personality and help you come off the page and makes them feel like they're meeting you. Absolutely. 
they also received a second submission oh, as okay. well. Beautiful. So we will definitely get to those shortly. So I wanted to go through a couple things as far as the editing process, because of course that's what we're talking about here. Now, again, big picture what is this essay about? I just had this question in a student um, meeting just before I joined <laughs> the webinar. And he was like, what is the difference between the why did I choose my major and my personal statement? Because I feel like I'm going to be talking about the same things. Like I'm saying, oh, this led me to my major. Um, and that's not the case. Your personal statement is supposed to be just, again, sharing who you are behind behind the page. So it's sharing a personal story that lets them feel like they get to know you. Um, you know, here is exactly the way you should be thinking about it is if you were going to write up a story, print it on a piece of paper, either in a notebook or you know, printing out multiple pages and you're walking into a grocery store and you're trying to get hired, you know, for a position in the grocery store based off of an essay. Does that essay tell them everything they need to know? You know, if they're going to be t hearing a story about who you are, what is that story that gets you hired? Or if they're going to be donating to your college fund or something, what's that story that would make them kind of want to donate to your college fund or hire you on the spot? Tell that story of who you are. And there's, you know, a lot of different ways of how to go about it, but Essentially, we need kind of a more dramatic opening. That's what we're going to be talking about is how to structure this and also showing you through edits how to structure this. But we want kind of a dramatic opening that tells them this is a different type of essay. It's not just, hi, my name is Michaela and I enjoy gardening. You know, it's, some, it's, something, it's something more grabbing than that, more gripping than that. Um, and then we want we want the body to kind of tell them who you are, really introduce who you are and where you're going to go in life. And then the ending should be something that kind of sticks with them, which can tie back into the beginning or it can tie into your future plans. Just really shows them kind of a full, complete sounding story. So when we are editing, these are the things that we're going to be looking for. And you can look for them along with us if you are wanting to take notes during this section. So first we're looking for a creative way to introduce sentences. Not only are we introducing the entire essay creatively, but when we're doing an editing round, we're looking for ways just to change up the wording to be a way to introduce a sentence creatively. It's not, I have an interest in chemistry, so I joined Science Olympiad we can just change that sentence around a little bit to sound more interesting. With a deep interest in chemistry, I joined Science Olympiad. It's a little less direct and also a little less boring, just to rephrase it slightly. Or my deep interest in chemistry led me to join Science Olympiad. Just some examples. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So you also want to talk about word usage. So using the same word in a sentence or you know multiple times in a paragraph we want to kind of avoid that um so what we don't want to say is something along the lines of i often create projects in my spare time like when i created a creation to count pennies now that's a little bit redundant but you that can was definitely a real see how that was a it, real sentence really, like <laughs> yeah um sometimes when you're thinking about the bigger picture and you're really just trying to get the story out it's easy to reuse words that are familiar and that's kind of where we come in. I encourage all my students to focus on telling their story first and what they want to say. And then we can absolutely go in and, and fine tune things later on. So instead, what we can say is I often create projects in my spare time, like when I designed a device to count pennies. So we're just using different words to get the same point across in order to not sound as redundant. Mm -hmm. These are all strategies that we're going to be using kind of on, on this call, you know, you, you're going to see it in action. But yeah, a pro tip for me, I, I still do this, everyone. I'm in my 30s and I still do this. Uh, read your essay or whatever you're submitting, an article in my case, sometimes read it out loud and see what sounds clunky, what doesn't like roll off your tongue very well, where your eyes kind of get stuck. And it really does help you out. It helps the flow um, really well. I always, I always, always, always tell my students to do this. 
Um, I tell them if there's one piece of advice you can walk away from with this is read everything out loud that you're going to write professionally. Email is just always, you when you hear it, it's Okay. I hear it now. So definitely, definitely try that tip. Yeah. And this is just some, another little tool, but um, sometimes students kind of like when you, if you say, if you start answering an essay prompt, sometimes you can kind of like go off in one direction and just kind of like keep going in that direction and not really realize that you've veered off from answering their actual question. If they ask you like, how do you show leadership? And you start talking about a story and then you end up kind of off in the weeds. It's really important just to, you know, when you're done writing a draft of an essay, just go back and read the essay prompt again. Just make sure that your question completely all the way through answers the question. Another good strategy is at the end of every paragraph, reread the essay prompt and make sure that all the way through you're structuring the answer. I think it said it glitched. Does yeah, I saw for you. <laughs> Which one? I'm not positive. It okay. glitched. Um so the slide before this we were talking about the importance of reading aloud, reading your your writing aloud, um, hearing just offers another deeper level of comprehension and understanding. Um, and then Michaela was mentioning how sometimes when we're trying to answer a prompt, we get a little bit, sometimes we veer off and we're, we're so dead set on the point that we're trying to make that we kind of take the long way to get there. Um, we only have 650 words, so we have to be mindful of when it's all said and done, have you actually answered the prompt in the way that you wanted to? Because it's very easy to kind of lose track of that, which is why writing an outline is so, so important when it comes to this. Yeah. Um, hopefully that answered. <laughs> Just so another <laughs> approach it for that, <laughs> read the prompt again. Always refer back to it. Make sure you're answering exactly what you want to be answering um, and hitting all of the key points that they're asking for. Oh, no, that's okay. Read, yes, read aloud. <laughs> Um, and then uh, this, this is kind of a weird thing. Um, I always say like professionalism is in the, in the details. This is a very strange thing only because I, I know from hearing people be always question like who wrote this essay. So it's kind of sometimes a common thing that parents will write essays for students. And so some things to look for to make sure that yours is not kind of standing out as one that it might seem like it you either purchased it offline somewhere or um, that your parents wrote it for you is to double check for no double spaces between words and after periods. That's something that, you know, your parents' generation was kind of taught was to put a double space afterwards. So it's a kind of a telltale sign. And then also general punctuation. Um, truthfully, you know, just like your periods or commas or inside of quotation marks is something I see, see a lot is kind of done wrong. I've definitely put them inside the quotation marks and outside. It looks really awkward. Um, just make sure that it looks professional, like you took time to look through it. And this wasn't a last minute thing for you. You weren't writing this the night before the deadline that you were taking care um, to sound professional in this. So just like pay attention, really care about this, even run it through Grammarly or something just to catch any little little snafus. Yeah, and it's definitely easier said than done. Um, I know when you're editing a lot, your eyes kind of get tired of, of rereading and seeing the same thing over again. It's really, really easy to miss those minor details that could really mean so much. So definitely look at it with a fresh set of eyes. If you feel like you're done and it's, you know, 11 o'clock at night, hopefully it's not the night before it's due, you know, <laughs> Close the computer, check it again in the morning with a fresh set of eyes and really just, you know, take your time to just look over the fine, the fine, fine details. Yeah. Um, this is right without fear. Intro. Edit without mercy. That's, yeah. That's that's like that. Just edit without mercy. Just know, yeah. you know, it needs, it needs to be perfect. So it's okay if getting the story perfect cuts out some fancy wording and stuff. It's okay if we're getting to the point. It's okay. 
Yeah. And this is definitely a judgment free zone where sometimes when I edit a student's work, um, it can kind of look like I might have taken a lot out or switched a lot of it around. Um, this is your story and we're just here to help you tell it the best way possible. Um, All right. So we do have some other resources. We have some free eBooks on our website. Um, all of our webinars are free and they're always recorded. So you can always watch them later on. If you're currently watching on YouTube, um, you can probably very easily navigate to our YouTube site to see all of our prior webinars. Um, so yeah. Okay, should we start some editing? Yeah, let's start editing. So our first submission, I will start sharing my screen there. Um, I am going to share access with Michaela so that yeah. way we can both um, edit live just so everyone kind of understands the process. Um, <laughs> we'll figure it out. All right. Oh, I think I do need to request edit access for the first one. Um, and then the second one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I do have edit access for this one. So um, we will definitely get to both. So don't worry about that. All right. So we can read through them together kind of out loud and kind of talk through maybe just the general theme or what's going on with this essay and then start some edits. Yes. All right. So this, we, I'm sorry, I'm still just opening. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Ooh. What? Nothing. I was just. Oh, I'm like, what? Trying to help us not look so wonky. <laughs> I'm just focusing on editing things because my computer is slowing down since I'm streaming the live thing. There we go. Nicole, are you here with me? <laughs> okay. Can y'all hear me or, or only Nicole? <laughs> Uh-oh. I think we're having some tough technical difficulties. Michaela, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Now I can hear you. Okay. Whew. All right. All right. I'm just trying to make it as big as possible. Yeah. It might be. Okay. All right. Well, we will be here. All right. Okay, um, how's your how's your view of the screen? I can't see it at all. Um, oh, okay. So I, I mean, like it's just so it's just so small. I can't see it. Yeah. I wonder, like, can we just like? Hey everyone. <laughs> so let's kind of start reading this out loud. <clears throat> First of all, she's answering, I think it's number five accomplishment on the common app um, accomplishment event that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. Never come back here again. The girl screamed tears streaming down her face. Very nice. Um, 
very nice kind of opening line here. The boy's face contorted with anguish, but he spit out resentful words in response. I won't. You're horrible. I can't believe you read a mackerel. I squinted at the screen and the Japanese characters did indeed read out. I was just reading out loud. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to keep going. Then. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. Did indeed read out quite literally meaning to read a mackerel. I love that they put like characters in there. Um, scratching my head, I couldn't find a way to fit mackerels into the main, into the main wanted to go the extra mile. So I reopened my not long neglected drawing app to appropriately reshape the speech bubbles to fit the translated English text. An hour later, I'd completed my first translation. Looking at my work, I was proud, having proved myself I was capable, I was capable, characters, dramatic, heart-wrenching breakup scene. Naturally, the next stop on the confusing Japanese idioms train was Google, the site where I go every time I encounter a daunting phrase I can't seem to translate. Scrolling through the search results, I learned the idiom meant to lie about oneself to make themselves look better, but I didn't learn how mackerels tied in. Upon further research, I found that mackerels were used to measure cost in Japanese markets prior to a proper currency existing, and the shop owners would often lie about how many mackerels they counted to make themselves look better to other owners. Returning the, to the comic I was translating, I typed, you lied to me into the speech bubble next to the distraught main character's face. During doing pro bono Japanese to English translations for fan made comics and video games is a hobby of mine. Um, on other classes, I was interested in namely Japanese, already speaking Chinese, a language similar to Japanese, and being a fan of many Japanese games, comics, and animation series. I absorbed Japanese phonetics and vocabulary like a sponge. I practiced my Japanese whenever I could, and my parents became irate when I replied to all of their questions in a mix of Mandarin and broken Japanese. As my interest in Japanese grew, I joined online sites for Japanese games and TV sh shows. One day, as I scrolled through my favorite game forum site, I noticed the translation request section countless Japanese to English translation requests for all sorts of things ranging from short comics to full video games were posted every day. I decided to test out my newfound Japanese skills on translating one short of short short off um, the four panel comics posted so I got to work. Translating the simple Japanese sentences to English was easy enough but of understanding Japanese enough to translate but translate it. When I posted the translation, I was brimming with pure excitement and satisfaction. The next day I logged into the site, opened a message in my inbox, and was pleasantly surprised to see a brief couple of thank yous for the translation. I felt a mixture of slight embarrassment at my comic being seen by several people and sheer joy that people enjoyed the comic enough to reach out and thank me. I decided to take on more translation requests, moving from brief comics to fan written stories and even fan made games. Staying up at night, typing away at my overheating laptop until birds are chirping outside became something I loved doing. Japanese translations were genuinely fun. Everything from learning a new word in Japanese or stumbling across a strange idiom I have, I have I'd have to decipher was eye-opening and fascinated me to no end. I gained more motivation to study Japanese hard and climbed up to the top of the class. Doing these fun translations made me even happier than when I completed a good drawing. Knowing that fans around the wor world were happy made me happy. I'm much softer than I believe I used to be. Knowing that I have the potential to make another person exciting is something that tugs on my heartstrings. Okay. And it's a little bit over word count. It's a 689. All right. <laughs> so, Nicole, I have thoughts. Do you, do you yeah. want to start? Should I start? Wait, 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 you, can when you start. You can start because I'm just editing. I'm just switching the screen around a little bit. Okay. <laughs> you can start. Yep, you're back. Okay, there we go. <laughs> so it's, I need to, I'm going to request edit access really quick. 
I don't think that I have it. Okay. But, and I know that you can't really see the screen very well. Any, nobody really can. And we can't even make this like small. I wonder if I can make can you it zoom in? Can you zoom in on it? Mm -hmm. I wonder. Does that, does that change? I think you can see it a little bit better. Let's see, let's do it again. Let's zoom a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. That should be a little bit better. Okay. I think. Yeah. I think they should be able to see that. Let us know if you yeah. really truly can't see that. But as we remember, it starts off with saying, I can't believe you read a mackerel and never come back here. It's te tears streaming down her face. I love this. Um, I love this opening. I think it needs to be shorter. I think never come back here again. The girl screamed tears streaming down her face in response to the boys like next resentful words. And then I won't. You're horrible. I can't believe you read a mackerel. So it's only two lines instead. I know that might be the, not the exact translation of what you were doing, but we need to shorten it up a little bit. I would say three lines is kind of a lot for um, a quote opening like this. Um, and I do this opening part. I screen at the screen. The Japanese characters did read out quite literally meaning to read a mackerel. Um, we, this next part, scratching my head, I couldn't find a way to m fit mackerels into the main wanted to go to the extra mile. I think it was the main story, but I wanted to go the extra mile. So I opened my long neglected drawing app to reshape the speech bubbles to fit the translated English text. An hour later, I'd completed my first translation. This is like kind of broken up because then the next thing is like you're trying to figure out what the mackerel is supposed to be. So what I would do here is um, scratching my head. I couldn't figure out why he would be talking about mackerels in this dramatic breakup scene. Like give context to what those phrases were earlier. And then um, we don't want to say wanting to go the extra mile. You know, I don't really know. We... I think the an hour later I completed my first translation needs to come kind of down further. And also I think, yeah, scratching my head, I couldn't figure out a way or why he would be mentioning mackerels in a breakup scene. And they could say something, yeah. but who was I to judge, you know, the author's intention or whatever. And then, you know, I would maybe have one sentence, just one about, um, you know, wanting to go the extra mile, I began researching on, you know, my, my best educational tool, <laughs> Google. And I learned that in Japanese, that idiom means to lie about oneself. So, um, like, you could say, like, adapting to this change in language, I reopened my long neglecting ne neglected drawing app to, you know, put a speech bubble in to fit the translated English text and then be like an hour later, I'd finished my first translation. That's all in one paragraph. So again, we only have one sentence about the, I did further um, research and stumbled across the meaning of how mackerels were oh i like that mackerels were used yeah let's put this sentence in my best friend like google or my best educational to google i discovered that mackerels were used to measure costs in japanese markets and shop owners would lie about how many mackerels they counted to make themselves better to other owners comma meaning that um this sentence would have indicated a lie, essentially. Then in that, after that one paragraph, everything is shortened. 
Then we transition to doing pro bono Japanese to English translations for fan made comments, comics and video games is a hobby of mine. We can really shorten down mm-hmm. everything here about the joining online sites. You know, I think it's very, you could say like growing up in a household where I, um, had like growing up in a household where I was already taught Mandarin and also sprinkled in my broken Japanese, much to the dismay of my parents. Um, you know, I, I absorbed, um, much to the dismay of my parents, comma, like I soaked, I absorbed up Japanese culture and tradition like a sponge. Then you go into, I became a fan of many Japanese games, comics, animation series, things like that, and also turned my eye to conquering the language, things like that. This grew, this led to me joining online sites for the Japanese games and and shows I loved, which led me to... Um, a chance translation request and suddenly here I am you know I I guess I like the the next day I logged into the site it doesn't need to be that specific like the next day like the first translation translation led me to logging to the site opening up a message in my inbox where I was pleasantly surprised like you don't have to be like this day but like that first translation led me to this I loved everything you said that entire second to last paragraph is perfect. Like, I don't think, I don't think the very last sentence, like that I gained more motivation to study Japanese hard and climb to the top of the class. We can remove that. But I love that. Yeah. Just this whole paragraph that can stay intact. We need to shorten up the top stuff because you go into a lot of like, Mandarin, Japanese, like there's, you can just shorten it to like answering my parents in a mixture of Mandarin and broken Japanese, like, you know, infuriated my parents, no end, move on. We don't need to spend like three sentences talking about it. Um, And then we need something that's kind of a bigger transition. We need something at the end that's like into your future, like through these translations, I have learned that I am, you know, more creative than I originally thought. I will take these lessons with me into my, you know, my professional career and beyond that just with a little bit of research and um, a genuine passion for what I'm doing, you know, I can create something beautiful or I can connect with others or something like that. Like we need an ending that's a little more like hopeful and um, what's the word? Just kind of like more like big picture, I guess. Yeah, I agree with all that. And I guess it'll also kind of widely depend on what you potentially want to study. If you know, then maybe you can kind of tie it in that way. Um, I really like how you talk about how you just being able to make other people happy is maybe something a feeling that you never really had before with strangers you know obviously so you were this was a new feeling for you and it was kind of um addicting to make you want to do it more and wow this is a really great feeling and this is something i've never experienced before and i want more of this and how can i you know, go out into the world and recreate this type of feeling in my, in my future, in my professional life and at college or wherever I plan on going. Um, I definitely agree with some of the, you know, getting rid of some of the detail in it and kind of taking some of it out. I, in this kind of middle paragraph, I love how you, it was a newfound Japanese skill. And I love how you talked about how it was by chance that you found that they were looking for translations. It wasn't something that you were looking for originally. Um, I think that that's really kind of unique to the story. So I would not take that piece out at all. Um, and I, I love how you started it the way that you did with the, with a quote and kind of drawing the reader in. I like to tell a lot of my students that 
imagine you are, um, ha imagine you have a camera lens and your first, your beginning of your, your personal statement is going to be zoomed in really wide, like really, really small. So you're really, really zoomed in and then you kind of have to zoom out um, and then show a little bit more of why we're even talking about this. Because when you start off with a really fine detail, it, it brings the reader in, it brings them more interested. They wanna know what you're speaking of, what you're talking about, why you're talking about this. And then you kind of have to come full circle at the end and explain, you know, the just like Michaela was saying, how you'll use it in your future or how it's shaped you and, and what you learn from it and how you'll use it going forward. Absolutely. I'm adding some break up scene. I agree. I'm just adding some suggestions in here. Um, have I been kicked out again? No, you're still here. Okay. No, you're still here. <laughs> like, what's happening? <laughs> I, I figured out. I figured out how to have everyone still hear me without um, seeing me. So that way the screen can continue to be large. So beautifully, I'm adding some suggestions to your document. I know that you probably, nobody's able to see them right now, but um, I will make sure that you get some, obviously you can look back on this recording, but I'm going to um, add some on there just for you too, <laughs> just so you can see them. Um, it did something weird when I tried to refresh, so I don't know. Um, some suggestions from us that you can look at in like kind of hard form in addition to what we kind of mentioned here. All right. Any anything awesome. else we need to say about, about this? How do you guys? Um, I, I, again, want to really um, sometimes – a lot of times students will say something or refer to something that makes sense to them. You have mm -hmm. to really envision your reader. Um, they may not know at all what you're referring to. So sometimes you kind of have to explain, I know we're, we're limited to word count and we want to be as intentful, intentional as possible um, with each one of our sentences, but sometimes you have to go a little bit extra in explaining off the bat because sometimes readers just won't understand. I know there was an essay, um, we were speaking about this recently where a student was comparing their life to a math problem and it was more of an advanced math problem and it made so much sense to them because they were very advanced in math but the reader that is reading this essay may not really understand the full concept of what that student was trying to to get to um so always just keep things like that in mind when you're you're speaking about um, anything that maybe someone else might not know. Yes. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to submitting. Um, you'll definitely get this with your edits. Um, you can refer back to this <clears throat> same document. I'm going to hide this one for now, and we are going to get on to our next. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Essay. I'm editing that one. <laughs> no, nope, that's okay. Um, I'm back for now. Yeah. And I'm going to close that out. I know that you're kind of like moving things around and everything. Do you want me to read out loud? If you want to, if you, <laughs> yeah, if you want to start reading it, sorry, just because it's easy. No, I don't care. I don't care. Um, you're the one running all the stuff that I, my computer will not handle. <laughs> give me one second. I'm going to show it in the stream. Um, okay. Okay. You should be good. Beautiful. Okay. And um, this one is from Eleanor. Perfect. Hi, Eleanor. Thank you so much. Um, Let me zoom in a little bit. That'd be beautiful. I'm like, mm. And we have access to this one now, too. So, another thing that, um, sorry, Michaela, before you start reading, another thing I'm sure all of our students are familiar with Google Docs now more than ever because of potentially doing remote learning at some point in the last year and a half. So we use, I use Google Docs for everything. And if you scroll up here to where it says editing and you just go to suggesting 
anything that I edit on here, or if I say, you know, I don't want you to use the word familiar, just as an example, if I close it out, they get the edit right on here. It doesn't actually take anything away until they accept it. Um, but you can see the suggestions and that's, that's how I do it. Um, I think Michaela does something very similar, but just as a yeah. quick tip. Yeah, if we could zoom in just a touch, that'd be beautiful. Let me, how's that? That looks awesome. good. Okay, that beautiful. Okay. Oh man, I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna butcher these words. Oh my goodness. Um, the words feel familiar in my mouth as I think it's, I call out to my grandparents bickering and polish in the hallway about where to park. My Babsia? Babsia? Automatically switches to English to greet me and hands me old sauerkraut jars filled with tomato soup as I set set down in their that I set down in the refrigerator in neat lines. The banter continues as I struggle to grasp words out of the conversation and fill in the gaps between my mother. I'm not gonna say that. I don't know the words. <laughs> the rise and fall of their voices, hand gestures and brief interludes in English let me piecemeal together their saga of parking struggles. This is awesome. Great. Yeah. I feel yeah. alone and disconnected. The crutch of mm, Babsia and Zizia uh, opens the door to conversation, but I am left with so many words I want to say that are replaced with a simple goodbye and I love you. This is amazing. Perfect. Period. Yeah, off the bat, yeah, off the bat, I think that this is phenomenal. Um, yeah. Really, really great. Yes. I. If you want to go up a little bit, we can kind of take this okay. like by. We can piecemeal it. Yeah. We can. Yeah. We can piecemeal it. Just like. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's good. And I can absolutely re relate to this too. My dad moved here from Germany, and so not exactly Polish, but I felt the same way. And my mom was always really funny when we'd go to the grocery store, and she wanted to talk about someone, so she'd talk in German, but. She like didn't know the words, so she just like make up random words, and it was always like definitely piecemealing things together, and it was always really funny. Um, but I, I love this. I think the my Babsia, I'm saying that wrong, I'm sure. Automatically switches to English to greet me and hands me old sauerkraut jars filled with tomato soup. Um, I think that you can remove the that I set down in the refrigerator and eat lines. You could always say something like. Um, you could remove it completely or you could say something like um, something I had come like a, a tradition I had come to expect, like the fact that she gives you um, food in kind of old jars or something like that. But I think the refrigerator and neat lines part that can probably be removed. Otherwise, I love the banter continues as I struggle to grasp words out of the conversation. That's like very that's painting a picture. Everybody has been there where someone's talking a different language in front of them and they're like, oh, mm -hmm. oh, I know that word. Oh, I know that word. Um, so I love this. The rise and fall of their voices, hand gestures, and brief interludes in English let me piecemeal together their saga of parking struggles. Perfect. Um, yeah. I think the crutch of Babsia and <laughs> opens the door to conversation that kind of loses me you can change that first part um you can just I, say yeah go mm -hmm. ahead go ahead no uh, so the way so this is a perfect example of how it's it's so it really depends on who's reading it so yeah. my you saying the the crutch of them opens the door to conversation is the crutch them giving you brief interludes of English because they know that you're there. That to me yeah. is how I, I grabbed it. Mm -hmm. um, but I understand how it could be left a little bit um, confusing. So, so I would, wanna... yeah, I felt you could say like, I, um, you know, although they were bringing me into the conversation, I still feel alone and disconnected at the end mm -hmm. of the conversation. I am left with many words. I want to say that, you know, are just simply replaced with a simple goodbye. And I love you. And also period inside of quotation marks right there. Mm -hmm. I love you. Switch them, switch them around. Um, so that's what I would say to this beginning. I, 
Also, the words feel familiar in my mouth as I call out to my grandparents bickering in Polish in the hallway about where to park. You could, the words feel familiar in my, in my mouth are kind of a contrast to what you're saying later. So you could say like, um, my ear catches familiar words as I hear or as I overhear my grandparents bickering in Polish or bickering loudly in Polish in the hallway about where to park. You could like kind of, you know, like, or my, my ear catches on familiar words. You could kind of change that a little bit just because it feels like a contrast to what you're saying later that you have words to say, but they don't come mm -hmm. out. Thoughts? Yeah, I would say something along the lines of, um, as I approach the door, I hear the, the all too familiar sound of my grandparents bickering in Polish. Mm -hmm. um, and then you don't even have to at, keep the place of about where to park because then you fill it in later on when you say, um, yeah, based on what they're saying, um, yeah, I'm able to piecemeal together the saga of parking struggles. So you don't have to really put that piece in there twice. Um, mm -hmm. And then later on where it says, I feel alone and disconnected, you can say thankful for, you know, the crutch of yeah. some English words. I still feel alone and disconnected, you know. And but then if you that can crutch say, sentence is not what you meant it to, then we're exactly. it the wrong way and you just need to rephrase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can say thankful, you know, or and you can even if you want to explain it a little bit further, if that is what you're trying to say, yeah. you can say um, and brief interludes in English, let me piecemeal together. You can say thankful for the brief interludes of English that let me piecemeal the story mm -hmm. together of their parking struggles. So um, it definitely really depends on what you're trying to say. Um, yeah. But I think that those could kind of all make it sound a little bit um, more put together. Yeah. And then leading the way through the blueberry bushes, zia, zia, zia. <laughs> If I was saying this in German, you guys wouldn't be able to read it either. <laughs> Follows close behind. Low hanging branches cut my legs when I'm focused on the sky. I stop every few minutes to look behind and make sure I haven't lost him. Three short, high pitched whistles cut the trees. Zia Zia, which is spelled differently here, mimics the tone and smiles. Attack, I whisper, whisper to myself smiling happy that i remember the word for bird for the for the bird my mind filters the different variations of sentences i've listened to and studied so intently with the hope of forming my own i want to portray my wonder at his connection with nature but i'm left with a feeble attempt to connect with a simple pointing at the woodpecker and a fee feeble patak so we're remaining in the moment it looks like Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, I, I think it's hard to give, um, for me, I would want to read the rest of it to yeah. see I, where I would want to do more edits because I want to see where we're going with this. Yeah. Um, I want to see where the story is taking us and where else we're getting to, um, minor suggestion. If you would, you know, potentially you could just use the word he, when you're referring to him. Um, so it's not as repetitive um, and it, it might read easier for your reader. Um, yeah. But, okay. Bebsia calls me from the balcony as she strings up my, at my track uniform on the clothesline. He needs help. I'm just saying he, you know, <laughs> now that I have um, some direction on who this is, I'm just saying he. He needs help, she tells me, gesturing to the garden where he sits fiddling with an old vacuum and cleaner. Sitting down next to him on the iron bench, I motion to the vacuum cleaner and take a look. The pieces are completely fused together as he tries to pull them apart. I push the button to release the chamber, but it remains stuck. Um, I don't remember what I don't know. He says that he, as he points at the seam of the cleaner, squinting to try to read the words. I looked at the jammed section and am immediately filmed, filled, 
filled with uh, hidden pride for understanding the word. Staying focused on the task at hand, I push the button down to see pulls and the vacuum flies apart, scaring away the patak um, pecking the ground. I love bringing back the word really quickly. Yeah. Um, and then he says with his rare smile as he grasps his hands, my hands in his leathered and calloused ones. Okay, let's can I let's like continue. that last sentence. I really like that last sentence so much. Polish polka music or po Polish polka blast through the house as my cousins dance around the Christmas tree in the living room with Rebsia and he <laughs> happily watching their grandchildren. The scent of fish sauce intermixes with mushroom gravy as I str straighten the lace tablecloth and carefully place each fork. The conversation is a fusion of overlapping Portuguese, Vietnamese, and Polish with ev an even more diverse range of topics, from the merits of medica meditation to explaining cell multiplication to my eager cousin. I sit with Babsia on one side, and he on the other. Babsia speaks to the table in exclusively Polish, relaying a joke she read in one of her magazines. I laugh before realizing what I'm doing. She turns me with pride in her eyes and speaks the word I've been yearning for. You understand me. This is adorable. Yeah. I make a point now to greet my parents in Polish and end with Calm. Can you can you go down? Can you go down a little Sorry. bit? Sorry. Sorry. No, that's fine. I just my little box is like <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I oh, love yeah. that lack of connection I felt, fear and shame at not being able to convey my hopes, dreams, and complex thoughts have dissipated with each new word I learn. A sparkling in his eye as I string words together, or the slight lilt in her voice as I end a phone call in Polish reminds me of the importance of my words. Though I still make mistakes conjugating phrases, I've immersed myself in conversation. Rather than staying in the kitchen, putting away jars of soup, I analyze, listen, and hear. I have worked to build my vocabulary and in turn my world with a new language and perspective. They are not just my grandparents, they're in the body. They're the embody embodiment of connection. A attack in the sky is not just a bird, but my inspiration to work harder and push my limits. A simple something <laughs> is not just a command to look around but a reminder to appreciate how far i've come and will go to understand is my goal not just understand polish but understand the intricacies of people and the world around me and connect initial thoughts i really enjoyed it i mm -hmm. really um i haven't checked the word count but it feels a little bit long yes depending on where we're going with this um if it's for the personal statement it feels a little bit long I love how we stay in the moment. I love how mm -hmm. you, I love the ending where you go back to all the different phrases that you had initially been speaking of and you connect them to um, inspiration and a reminder and your goal to understand. I think that that is really, really great. Um, we often try to get our students to come full circle and yeah. you definitely hit the nail on the head with that one. There's definitely places that you can cut. Mm -hmm. um, I love how you stay in the moment and you give you know severe detail in everything that's going on because you can picture it. The scent of fish mm -hmm. sauce intermixes with a mushroom gravy. Yes. You know your reader's smelling that. Your reader's understanding mm -hmm. what's going on. I love how you talk about Portuguese, Vietnamese, and Polish. So you have you're introducing the fact that your family is even more diverse. Um, and there's probably other languages that are going on. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed and how later in, in the last uh, second to the last paragraph, you say, I now make a point to greet my grandparents in Polish and end with, um, I love you. But you, you translate it for the reader, which I think is great because they're really they wouldn't have grasped your intention of that sentence unless you um, translated it for them. So I think those are kind of my initial, uh, my initial thoughts. My initial thoughts are the, the part with the vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. I also enjoy that we stay in the moment, but I think it would be, it feels like it jumps around a lot. Like I, I can't tell what kind of timeline that we're on. And so I don't know if this is all over the course of one day. I don't know if it's different yes. 
parts of the year. So I would say try to make that clear throughout, kind of have a theme running throughout. Um, I love bringing in the talk into multiple sections, but the part with the vacuum cleaner. We can cut some of that out, I think. <laughs> a lot, a lot of it. Um, I think until you get to the part where the vacuum flies apart and scares the patak away in the moment i was like we could probably lose this entire section so i feel like mm -hmm. the remaining part of that is the patak if there's a way to bring in like the patak you know downstairs like poker music blasts out the window you know of my grandparents house scaring away the patak that had made its home on the windowsill done then you can remove that whole the vacuum part i understand that you want to have another word in there though i just think and i really like where you say his rare smile as he grasps my hands yeah. in his leather and calloused ones but i think that we can definitely cut the middle of this a little bit um you know i walked so now so here you're you're outside um and you remember with you see the bird and you remember the word for bird. Um, you are saying you kind of want to be like him connecting, you know, with nature. Maybe you just say, as we sit on the bench, you know, we look to the jammed vacuum cleaner and pulling it apart. And you just kind of get to the point a little bit faster. Like there's less of a break in between. Okay. So you're in the garden and now you're, sitting on a bench um so maybe just kind of go from there and then we're interrupted by polka music blasting through the house like if this is all the same day or if you're trying to portray it as all the same day maybe you can kind of just give it a little bit more of an introduction kind of flowing from the, the previous paragraph mm -hmm. you can even maybe bring that last sentence of the rare smile and the calloused hands, like you could remove that whole section because I know it, it looks like we're way over word count. Um, so I'm, like, sure. I'm, I'm trying to find a way. Like, how do we remove like 300 words? This is yeah. This is 776 words. Yeah. So, so. if this was me, I would remove this vacuum cleaner part. And I would find a way to bring your word up to that, up to the bird paragraph. Like I would say if, if our, I can't remember what our, our ending word is, but if it's the rare smile as you grasp his hand, you could simply say something like my startled laugh at realizing that I had conquered this word, um, you know, startled the talk that's pecking on the ground or something like that and his hands covered mine like have it in that paragraph yeah. if possible or like I don't want to lose that part but I kind of want to lose the rest of that paragraph mm -hmm. because you say Patak I whispered to myself smiling happy that I remember the word for bird so maybe you maybe he heard you say it and like that's kind of where you piece that part in mm -hmm. like his um, like, clap on my back you know, yeah. and scares the patak away, you know, something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I love how you tie it in, though. I just, I think, I don't think, you know, and every essay is different. Some essays need a lot of story shaping and a lot of, and some essays need a lot of line editing to polish up the language. And so with this one, I would say it's just a little bit more story shaping where we just need to figure out what timeline is this kind of happening on let's shape mm -hmm. that a little bit so it is really strong and clear so if we are in the moment we know which moment and then we're just making smaller tweaks to the actual line because like your wording and the way you're phrasing everything is beautiful yeah it's just i agree with that with our kind of story shaping edits, like this one is ready to go. And this one is definitely in one of the final edits stations, sections or whatever, statuses. And you, we could definitely tell. Yeah. And there, 
you know, at, at 776 words, unfortunately, I mean, the story is great, but there yeah. definitely needs to be a place where you cut. And um, in our, in my opinion and Michaela's opinion, I guess, is that kind of the place that you should do it. Um, and mm -hmm. then make sure that you're leaving room to really explain, are you trying to stay on one day? Is this the same week that you're there event? Or yeah. is this just all different pieces of your memories as, as a child? Mm -hmm. But no, I think your writing is beautiful. Um, you really, I think I said this before, hit the nail on the head with staying in the moment um, and providing a lot of detail. So thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you um, for your submissions, everyone. I really appreciate yeah, it. <laughs> we, we really appreciate it. This was, you know. It's good enough. That's good enough. It's like rearranging. Sorry. <laughs> These buttons down here are a little tricky. <laughs> um, it was really fun to be able to do it live. Yeah. We had one, but you know, to, we really wanted to get someone who people who were on the call. So that yeah. definitely made it really unique. Um, so as a reminder, if you had an essay or you don't have an essay yet, but you want similar editing to kind of what we just did, or you need some help brainstorming, um, definitely check out our personal statement package and contact us. I, my email is in the chat. Michaela's email is in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. All of our information is on our general website, which you can pretty much find anywhere. Um, follow us on social media. We also post some tips there as well. Um, and again, it's, sorry, were you gonna say I, was, I was gonna say, you know, <laughs> what we did there, each one of those was about 15 minutes. So the personal statement, this personal statement package, the brainstorming and outlining call alone is an hour, hour and a half. So like, you can see what we can do in just 15 minutes and we can make sure that you have a lot of content. We're shaping a lot of content, even with just 30 minutes offline of, you know, not us talking back and forth, but like heavy editing in your document, we can shape up an essay and we can edit it really, like really concisely. We can definitely add some good content. So this is just an idea. This is just a sample of what we can do in kind of a <laughs> much broader sense. Um, yeah. Yeah. If you Cause know sometimes to, we'll, we'll, I'll shape a sentence and then I'll read it over and then I'll reshape it again and then I'll change it and add a little bit more. So this is, was kind of, like you said, a little bit of a highlight um, to what we really do in depth, but it would, it usually takes a little bit longer. We spend a little bit more time and do a little bit more detail. Um, so we did have a question, quick question. What topics would we say to avoid on the personal statement essay? We kind of touched on this in our last. Yeah. Um, so two things, we will absolutely tell you. Um, <laughs> however, definitely check out our last webinar that was, I believe it was July 24th, 26th. It was basically and, how to get started on the personal statement, like where to where to get started. Yeah, it, yeah. so and we, we gave all of our additional mm -hmm. tips um, for the personal statement. So what topics to avoid? Um, winning the big game, a loss of a family member, um, I'm drawing some links here. Okay, I got this. So okay. yeah, you have an infographic. I'm, I'm envisioning your infographic. <laughs> yes, it's all good. Um, I so I really recommend any sort of loss of a family member. Avoid it. Honestly, not that it's a bad. It's not a bad essay topic. It's just that there's so many of them sent in. It's so hard to stand out. Same with anything about winning the big game or like going to state with you know model un or debate or whatever just there's nothing nothing about like winning the big game it, honestly i can't even tell you how many i read that was like someone's mom dies of cancer someone's grandma dies of pneumonia whatever and then oh we went to state we worked really hard at football we went to state and it just like it doesn't doesn't land as well and then um anything about feeling othered like if you um, there's just a lot of them that are sent in. It's not that there's a bad topic. Again, just there's a lot of essays that are sent in about this. So then it's hard to stand out. Um, so especially if you've ever 
gone overseas to do like a mission trip and you were so happy to come home and you don't live like those people like that avoid that one um anything about overcoming injury an injury or overcoming shyness or overcoming anxiety there's just so many so many of those essays and then I think that's it I think that's pretty much it just avoid yeah. those kind of big ones um so with that, what would it be one call for brainstorm and another call for editing in regards to the personal statement package? So the first call um, would be brainstorming and kind of outlining. Mm -hmm. um, and then, Mikhail, correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding is, so it's two, so it's two all together, but the first one would be brainstorming and outline. And then you would kind of write on your own. You, we brainstorm together on a call and then you would go and you would, you know, start writing from wherever we left off on the outline. Depends, well, it, it'll be about an hour call. So depending on how much of an outline that we need to write or how structured it, it gets to be, some outlines are very, very. Do a content and structure editing session. And then we will give you a final edit after that. So it's two calls to like, all together and it's two rounds of edits from us. Um, a lot of times we don't do all of our edits live because you don't necessarily uh, need to be on camera or on a call while we're sitting there reading apart, reading, picking <laughs> apart different pieces of your essay. So a lot of our work is done on the back end also. So that's kind of how that, that is structured. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I work better editing offline. Like nobody needs to hear me muttering to myself like a crazy person. So <laughs> yes, sometimes it will leave some, some things or if I need clarification from you, if I'm not really understanding where you're trying to go with this, or I need some clarification, you know, I'll make a note and we'll touch on that piece. Um, mm -hmm. But typically we do all of our editing offline. So what if I need more coaching or editing sessions? So at that point, if you still you know, feel like you need a little bit more help or you have other essays that you need to write, supplementals, everyone should kind of have an idea of what they are expected to be doing if you are a senior, rising senior. Um, definitely continue to contact us and we can, you know, talk about kind of some of the packages that we offer during the school year um, for one-on-one -on -one with one of us. Yeah. Well, we hope to hear from you guys um, and of okay. course you ways to contact us. But other than that, we really appreciate you taking the time tonight to edit some essays with us. And I hope you got some ideas of how, to, how it can help your own essays. And if you don't, then contact us and we can for sure help you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you liked this session, definitely uh, shoot us an email, leave us a mm -hmm. comment, um, just so we are always trying to add new things, um, get creative. So definitely we would love your feedback, but thanks everyone. Have a good night.